or the leader of humanity, Prophet Muhammad. His household and companions and followers till the day of judgment. Today, we are discussing by ascension the, the institution of marriage, which we have discussed earlier, the right of uh, women over their husbands, and that was husbands also over their wives. Today, we are by ascension discussing the fundamental reason why we should make the institution of marriage to be great and important. Uh, the reason why a Muslim is encouraged to engage in marriage, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this institution to be an institution of worship. It's as good as coming to Jumat prayers by marrying. Because you earn reward by coming to Jumat prayers and you earn reward by marrying. And the beauty of marriage is that the reward of marriage is continuous. Right from the point of seeking for the marriage, implementing it, and taking the responsibilities within, angels will continuously, non-stop, give you reward for this institution we have mentioned. The same applies to the woman. And that's why marriage is 50% of your religion. No any institution was given this allocation except marriage. It is so because in every second you are in, in, in it. In every second till death you are in it. So the reward attached to it cannot be quantified. The eating, the feeding, the clothing, the sheltering, the accommodation, care, all these are recorded for you, not against you. The same applies to the woman. And that's why there is nothing you can do so as to achieve such great reward as far as Islam is concerned. Unfortunately, today, a number of individuals have bastardized the institution of marriage. It's just like just pick and drop, pick and drop, pick and drop. Allah says, and among his sciences, is he has created you from dust, that is our grandfather and Nabi Adam. Then suddenly you were human beings that are now growing, procreating through the legal institution of marriage. Because Allah will never welcome any procreation except through marriage. Even if it occurs, it's not recognized as far as Islam is concerned. And that child is called a bastard. He's not entitled to anything of his father. Marriage, among the reasons why you should marry, is to build, is to build a credible, in fact, a righteous house, Beit Saleh where you have children that are highly responsible. Those children who are salihin, who are righteous. Those who are going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are going to take care of the family and the extended family. The progeny attached to them. They will assist in building the nation. Mujtama'ihim. They will serve their ummah and their country. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, among his sciences is that he created from yourself mates that you may find tranquility in them and you have joy and you have affection and you have mercy indeed in that are signs for people of thought and understanding those who are reflected now the children are part of the family and the Quran mentioned them greatly. And Rasulullah emphasized the children. Even though in the Jewish policy and principles that you have only maximum of four children, minimum of two, male and female. Even though we are inclined to that in our in our in our system of governance. Uh, for those who are in foreign services will understand this better. Why the responsibility of your legal wife is one, and your legal children to them is four, which is contrary to our own teaching in Islam. I think it's high time our 
legislators will start questioning some of the Jewish ideologies that were introduced by force into a nation that is not Jewish in nature. In Islam, we are to procreate and to have as much as possible of children, but not bringing up children irresponsible, children who are going to be proud of, children actually who are going to form a nation, who are going to fight corruption, who are going to be ideal, who are not going to only remain worshiping Allah, but they will assist their family and extended family and they will assist the nation by building the nation, not destroying it. All these actually are there as importance of having children. Of course, if they die before the parents, anybody that lost his children before maturity, up to three or two, that person is qualified to be in a gender. And those who are lucky to have them, they brought them up, they are matured, they are worshiping Allah, no amount of worship. They will worship except that reflect automatically in your account of good deeds. And that's why on the day of Qiyamah, some in paradise, they will ask Allah, why are we placed in this position that we don't deserve? And angels will communicate them that it is the istic far of your children for you that give you that position. It is sound hadith. And for those who are lucky to have their children memorizing the whole Quran, on the day of Qiyamah, when the whole worlds are gathered, not world, right from Anabi Adam till the end of the world, if the world will reach one billion years to come, everybody will be there, your name will be mentioned, and you are going to be crowned like the way uh, kings are being toban. You are going to be crowned in the midst of billions of human beings that your son has memorized the Quran. It is not you who memorized it, but your son. I think some will never even have space to put the calf because if they have 20 children and all of them memorize the Quran, you can understand that calf will not have place to be put upon, but their dignity and honor will continue to be there in the paradise. So we should do a lot in our children. They are our resources that are even better than our own work because after your death, after your death, the goodness of your children will be the only thing to reflect in your account, not the bad deeds of theirs. Long as you did not train them to be bad. It means, while you are in your grave, and you are no more seen in that time, it is only the world that is going to be there for you while you are in your grave. The ahadis are here so many. Of course, cannot be discussed in one foot, but we pray Allah to, Allah to guide us to count all of us among those who are training their children. By having an ideal family, a man and a woman and the children, we can have an ideal society. There is no nation that can imagine, either in dream or life, to have an ideal society when the families are destabilized, when the family is disorganized, when the family is corrupt, when the family is irresponsible. It is only ideal families, responsible families, that can create and produce a society that is ideal. I pray Allah to, Allah to count our own society to be ideal and to give us peace in our nation.